Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Priyansh Agarwal. In this video, I am going to be covering a famous competitive programming trick, which is known as the difference array technique. Now I'm very sure some of you must have already heard about it. So the aim of this video is to not just tell you how this trick works. The aim is to give you a clear visualization and to make you completely understand it just so that in case you encounter any new problems on it, you're still able to tackle them. So at the end of the video, we'll be having a challenging problem. I wouldn't say it's very, very challenging, but you would only be able to solve it in case you understand how this trick works completely. So let's start with an example to see where exactly can you apply this trick. Uh, for this, I've taken a problem statement. This is the problem. Given an array of n elements, perform Q queries on it and print the final array after performing all the queries. The constraints given to you are n is less than equal to 10 to the power 5 and q, the number of queries is also less than equal to 10 to the power 5. Now what you have to do in every query is that you have to go from the li index to the ri index and you have to add xi value to all the you know values present from li to ri. For example, if you look at this, let's suppose the array initially given to you is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. All the values are let's suppose filled with 0. Okay. And consider these queries. q1 is the query which says li equals to 0 ri equals to 2 and xi equals to 5. So you need to go from the 0th index to the second index and you need to add value 5 everywhere. So if you look at it, initially the array was 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay. And at the end, what you did was you performed this query. You went from the 0th index to the second index and you added value 5. So 5 is here, 5 is here and 5 is here. Correct. Now, if you look at the second query, it says 1, 3, 6. So that means you need to go from the first index to the third index and you need to add value 6 to it. So you added uh, 6 here, it became 11. You added 6 here, it became 11. And you added 6 here, so it became 6. Similarly is the third query. You need to go from the second index to the sixth index and you need to add value 1. So second index is here, third index is here, and fourth, in, uh, fourth index is here, fifth index is here, and sixth index is here. So you added 1 to all of these values. Correct. Now the final array looks something like this. This is your final array. Now my question to you is, if you were to naively do this, if you were to do this in a brute force manner, how much time would that take? Then clearly, to perform a single query, you need to go from the li index to the ri index and you need to add value xi everywhere, right? So that would take order of n time in the worst case to handle a single query. Now, if you have to handle q queries, then obviously that would take order of q into n time, right? So the naive solution will not work. Clearly, why? Because q is less than or equal to 10 to the power 5 and n is also less than or equal to 10 to the power 5. So now let's look at how the difference array technique works and how you can solve this same problem very, very efficiently. The only idea is that if you want to add x from lth index to the rth index, you don't have to go and add x to all the values from L to R. What you can do instead is that you add x to lth index and you add minus x to r plus lth index. Let's try to understand why this works. Okay. Let's suppose this is your array. Okay. And uh, let's, these are the indices, uh, considering one based indexing for now. Let's suppose I tell you that you need to add value 5 from the third index to the fifth index. So what would that mean? This would mean that you need to do plus 5 here, plus 5 here and plus 5 here. Correct. How about we visualize this same thing in a different manner. And let's say I tell you that do one thing. Instead of, instead of adding 5 to all the values from 3, 4, 5, do one thing. Add 5 here. Right. And add minus 5 here. Okay, add 5 to lth index and add minus 5 to 6th index, which is the r plus 1th index. Now do one thing, take a prefix sum of this array. Let's suppose this initially was 0, 0. Okay. Now if you take a prefix sum of this array, what will you get? You will get the same thing here. See, if you take a prefix sum of this array, you will get 0, 0, 5, 5, 5. And when you're about to do a plus 5 here, this will get cancelled by a minus 5. Okay, so you'll get zero here, right? So this is the main trick behind this difference array technique. Another way to visualize this is to say that if let's say this is an array, if you want to do some addition on the values from L to R, imagine it like this. Let's suppose you fire, okay? Let's suppose you have a gun and you fire, let's say X shots from Lth index, okay? So you have X shots being fired here. Okay, you fired these X shots. And now if you come here, till the rth index you want all of them to reach and then at the r plus 1th index you want all of them to be nullified. So what you can do at r plus 1 is that you can do you know uh, opposite shots, opposite x shots, which means like saying that you do plus x here and you do minus x here. So that what happens is that when all of these shots reach at the r plus 1th index they get cancelled out. 
right? So this is the main idea behind difference array. And if you do something like this, you can perform a query in just order of one time, right? Because all you're doing is you're doing ARR of L plus equal to X and you're doing ARR of R plus one minus equals to X. This entire stuff is just order of one, right? And at the end, once you've performed all the queries, that is the time when you can take a prefix sum of this entire array and you will get your final array. Okay. For example, if this was the example, let's suppose, you know, our final array came out to be 5, 11, 12, 7 and 1, 1, 1, right? This happened when we were doing every single query in order of n time. Let's look at the same thing in a difference array, you know, technique manner. So do one thing, do a, uh, a of L plus equals to X and do A of R plus one minus equals to X. So if you look at this array, which was initially, you know, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 and 0. For the first query, which is from 0 to 2, you need to add 5. So do plus 5 at 0th index and do minus 5 at 2 plus 1, which is the third index, right? Similarly, for the second query, you have 1, 3, 6, which means you do a plus 6 at 1 and you do a minus 6 at 3 plus 1, which is the fourth index. Similarly, you have the next, uh, you know, query, which says 2, 6, 1. So you do a plus 1 at the second index and you do a minus 1 at the seventh index, six plus one at index. But does the seventh index exist here? No. So if your R plus one comes out to be outside the array, you don't have to do anything. Correct. Now this is your actual array. Okay. This is your actual array that comes out to be after performing all the queries. Do one thing, take a prefix sum of this array. So initially you have five here, then you do plus six, it becomes 11. Then you do plus one, it becomes uh, 12. Then you do minus five, it becomes a seven. Minus six, it becomes a one. Uh, zero, you don't do anything. So it remains one and zero again, it remains one. Now look at this array and compare it to the array that you initially got. These will be the same, right? Isn't this a very cool technique, right? So look at it like this. In order to process one single query, you're just handling it in order of one time because you're doing just these two operations. ARR of L plus equals to X and ARR of R plus one minus equals to X. And then once you've processed all the queries, at the end of the day, you're just doing a prefix sum of this entire array, which will take order of N time. So the total time complexity comes out to be order of Q plus order of N. Initially, it was order of Q into N. So this is the main optimization that, you know, you can do. Okay, now I'm pretty sure you must have understood how this technique works. So let's test your knowledge with this one problem. So initially you were doing something like ARR of L plus equal to X, ARR of L plus one plus equal to X, so on up till ARR of R plus equal to X, right? This was what was required in the problem. Now I want you to do it in a different manner. I don't want you to add X to all the values. I want you to take the ZOR of that value with X. Okay. So if your array was something like, uh, you know, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. If I tell you L, uh, let's suppose L is equal to 1, R is equal to 2 and X is equal to let's say 3. So your array, what you will do is that you will take the ZOR of all the values from 1 to 2 and with 3. So your array would become something like 0, 3, 3, 0 and 0. Okay. Now let's suppose I give you L is equal to 1, R is equal to, uh, let's suppose 3 and X is let's suppose equal to 1. Now you need to take the ZOR of all the values from L to R with 1. So your array would become something like this becomes, this remains 0. Now you take the ZOR of 3 with 1. So 3 ZOR 1 will become 2. Then you take another 3 ZOR 1 with one, uh, 3 ZOR 1, it becomes 2. With this, you take a ZOR with one, it uh, becomes one and zero. This is your final array that you want to print now. Okay. So how will you handle this query? Take a pause of one minute and then come back to this video in case you're not able to figure it out. Assuming you've taken the break, this is how you can solve it. Very, very simple. See, you have to just do ARR of L ZOR equal to X and ARR of R plus one ZOR equal to X. See, I told you this visualization concept, right? That this is your array. Assume you have to add the value X from L to R. So this means like firing X shots with a gun from here. Okay. And then canceling it out by firing X shots in the reverse direction from R plus one. This is exactly how it works. Take the ZOR, you know, take the ZOR with X here, right? Take the ZOR with X here and take the ZOR again with X here at R plus one at index so that it cancels out. Okay. If you don't believe me, you can, uh, you know, perform the same query uh, using this approach. So this is zero, 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 zero. Initially, the first query was L is equal to one, R is equal to two and X is equal to three. So perform the first query, take the ZOR with, uh, you know, uh, basically take the ZOR of uh, A of uh, L with uh, three. So this becomes uh, zero, three 
and uh, take the zor with r plus one uh, value also with three so this becomes zero and this becomes three okay this is your final array after this first query handle the second query l is equal to one r is equal to three and x is equal to one okay so now go to again a of l which is this value uh, take the zor with one so this becomes a two this remains the same this remains the same and then at the end when you're here take the zor again with one so this becomes a one now do one thing at the end once you've processed all the queries take a prefix zor of this entire thing if you take a prefix zor this becomes a two sorry this becomes a zero this becomes a two this remains a two this becomes a one and this one also gets cancelled here so this becomes zero two two one zero what is your final array here zero two two one zero okay so this is how the difference array technique works uh, i am pretty sure after this video you would have not only understood how this technique works but you would be confident enough to apply it in new problems which might not just be related to let's say addition subtraction but something like zor something like multiply divide right so yeah that is all that i have for all of you in this video in case you like this video don't forget to smash the like button and uh, don't forget to uh, subscribe the channel because you are about to bring more such videos like these